All right, the pet spotlight for today will be on another pet that's not a tier one, the Nexus Welpling. Nexus Welpling, where do you get this pet at? Well, I should probably explain what this UI, because it looks a lot different from what my other one is. Uh, there was an update to rematch. I don't want to say recently because I don't update my add-ons very often, but I updated my add-ons and this is the new version of it. And it's going to take some getting used to, but there is an old version I can go back to for screenshots of my for my videos, so it's all good. But anyways, um, Nexus Welpling, where do you get it at? Well, uh, you get it in the Boron Tundra around this little area right here. I made sure to turn on my mouse cursor so you can see it. Just go to the Nexus and just circle around here. I'm pretty sure it's around there. Here. Let me get rid of that. There we go. See, so look at all these Nexus Welplings. I forget what the name of the add on is that shows all this crap right here. I think it's called Pet Tracker or something. I don't know. But yeah, Nexus Welplings around the Nexus. Uh, Nexus Welpling, the one you want is. Uh, he only has three breeds available to him. Ooh, that's cool. It shows them all right off the bat. He has the Power Power, Power S, and Power Balance. The Power Power version is the one you want because he has 341 health, I mean attack, which is ridiculous. And that's just a really high amount of attack. This guy is a huge, just like straight up hard hitter. That's what he does. He's really good in PvE, like when you're fighting against the Tamers and your garrisons or stuff like that. Like, these are all the teams I have them in, and it's basically just a whole bunch of uh, teams that are going against the Garrison Dailies. Like, I have both of my... I have just two Nexus Welplings. Both of them are the exact same breed, and they both use, like, the same exact abilities. Just because they hit so hard that it doesn't really matter what the type is, just as long as they don't uh, straight up have immunity. I mean, take less damage from the Mana Surges, like Mechanical Pets they'll do really good against them with their abilities so if you really just want a pet to just blow through everything without having to get a whole bunch of different pets to counter the specific garrison dailies uh... just get two nexus whelplings and you'll do just fine i'll have a royal peacock in here just for just for fun because i can sometimes throw it out first with arcane storm and then just feign death into one of my ma my whelplings and then i should probably talk about what the whelpling actually does so the whelpling uh, has this little ability right here called Mana Surge. Mana Surge deals a shit ton of damage every turn for three turns. It locks you into the move, it's like Stampede, except it just does a crap ton of damage. And it does additional damage if the weather is Arcane Storm, which he can put out. He's the only pet who has Mana Surge who can also put out Arcane Storm. Why is it showing pets at current level 25? Why is that not a default option? Whatever, I'll have to change that later. Uh, yeah, out of all the pets who can use Mana Surge, he is the only one who uh, can also put out the weather effect. And he just happens to be the one with the highest amount of just base power. Which is really good. Because uh, it already hits really damn hard, and since his power is 341, which is ridiculously high for a power power type, I mean, it's not like high as, say, a, a, a Ragnaros or Tumblr. Shit, I don't even know what his real name. <laughs> I call it Tumblr. Servant of Demidos. There we go. Yeah, that guy. Or even a Emperor Crab. Those all have high more attack than him. But he definitely is in their same league as a hard hitter. So what he does is he just throws out Arcane Storm, which is a neat little AoE. It kind of works like Thunderbolt, where it just splits the damage between all active pets. So if your opponent has one pet left, it's going to do a lot of damage. It's totally worth just using it off cooldown, because uh, it does more damage in a basic attack. And unless you have Tail Sweep and you go second, Tail Sweep does more. But it does more damage in Frost Breath, so it's totally worth using, and it's a nice little AoE. So you throw that out, Arcane Storm, the weather effect isn't anything special, all it does is just make all pets immune to roots and stuns, so you can't be interrupted while you're in your mana storm, so the only way to actually stop it is for them to change the weather and then stun you, or for them just to straight up dodge it, which is like the best way to stop mana surge, because once you get off Arcane Storm and use mana surge, uh, you're going to kill whatever pet you're going against, like there is no pet that can actually survive. Even mechanical pets will get killed, but I mean, they'll have the racial going and they'll be able just to, you know, survive that way. And undead pets just cheat because of their racial anyway. They'll die and act with their racial, but they 
will be able to take a, a one of the hits of Mana Surge while in their move on dead, so... I mean, in their round of immunity. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, the reason it's able to kill anything because not only does it hit really hard, it has a chance to hit from... Oh, it won't let me see that. From 361 to 554. Uh, both of those are way higher than a normal basic attack, plus an additional 180 every time you do it. So let's see, what's the minimum amount of damage it can do? Uh, let's round that up to 200. About 550 damage. And for a high end of about 700 something damage? No, about almost 800. So about 5 to 800 damage it can do every turn. Which is a lot. Plus, plus, uh, the Welpus Welpling, <laughs> the Nexus Welpling is a whatchamacallit, a dragonkin, which means he deals 50% additional damage on the next round after bringing a target below 50% health. During your mana surge, if your opponent doesn't block any of them, uh, you're going to activate your dragon racial because you're just doing so much damage. And once you activate your mana racial and one of your mana surges, it's going to hit for about a thousand damage. So that's why you, you're basically just going to kill anything that you have mana surge on. You just hit so damn hard. It's pretty easy to stop in PvP if you know how to, if you have a pet on your team that can dodge or switch him out with like a fiendish imp or change the weather and then stun them, which is, I don't advise. So you don't really see them that often in PvP, uh, but you can see them in PvP. And if you do, if you don't have a way to stop them, you're basically, your best choice is just to try to out DPS them, which is kind of hard to do because they have good health. 1400, 1400 health is the baseline health you want to have in PvP. So that's not really that big of an option, so you can actually use them in PvP and do pretty well. This team right here, uh, actually this was before I started recording my win losses. It'd be cool if rematch just recorded your wins losses for you so I don't have to do it. So Surge Masters, four wins, two losses. Yeah, that was more of a gimmick. Uh, none of those have my double Nexus Welpling teams. It's like one of the few pats where you can use like two of them on a team and it's totally fine just because, you know, they both synergize well with each other because they can both put out the weather effect and use mana surge. <laughs> But if your opponent has some kind of humanoid abilities, you're kind of screwed. Like if you're going against a darkness team, you're going to lose because they can out DPS you. And they have a type advantage on you because darkness does more damage to dragonkins. But yeah. Anyways, so his bread and butter is the mana surge. I mean the arcane storm mana surge combo. Uh, mana surge is a three round cooldown, so after that's down, you can just switch to your second Nexus Welpling if you have one and then just use his as well. Or just attack because he hits really damn hard too. With his basic attacks, refresh, arcane storm, yada yada yada. Nexus Welpling, he can get his uh, weather effect out no problem. Actually, you know what? If your opponent changes the weather on you, you'll start taking less damage too. So yeah, changing the weather is a is a soft counter. I mean, it won't stop the mana surge, but he'll take a lot less damage because it's not doing 180 extra damage every turn. Okay, so now that we've explained uh, why he's such a huge powerhouse. Um, what about his other abilities? Well, I mean, he has wild magic, which is okay. It's a, it's a neat ability, since he has such high power, it actually is probably one of the strongest wild magics you can actually put out, since wild magic does scale off of how much power you have. The Senjin Fetish is also a pretty good user of wild magic, because he has like 300 uh, attack power, and it's only 82, while the next Welpling can put out one with 90, so, you know, like 8 higher. A uh, creature kind of sucks. There aren't really too many good pets that use it, to be honest. Uh, Zero Welpling. Let's see. Ashen Vell. How do I not have so many of these pets? One day I'm going to have every single pet in the game. Just you watch. Pretty close to that. Oh, yeah. Chi Chi is a pretty good pet that can use wild magic. Core Fire Imp is also pretty good, too. For wild magic, I mean. Uh, I think Sunshine Finish is probably the best user of wild magic, though, because he's a undead pet. And he actually has a dot he can use to take advantage of it. But yeah, if you want to pet these mod magic, use your guy. He also has seer magic, which kind of sucks. I don't recommend using it. I mean, it's nice against haunt teams, but it's kind of it kind of sucks. I mean, it removes all buffs and debuffs from you, which is nice and everything, but it doesn't really have any other added benefits like dispel magic or whatever it's called, where 
not only does it remove everything, but it also heals you. So it's not a it's not that great. I wouldn't recommend taking it. Mana Surge just hits too damn hard to not take. And as far as basic attacks, both are good. I usually take Tail Sweep because uh, if you're slower than your opponent, you do 450 damage instead of 325. Uh, so you do about 125 extra damage. I think it's 125. Yeah, it's about 125 extra damage. And Nexus Wobbling's pretty damn slow. 244 speed. So all you do is just be slower than your opponent, which is uh, pretty much going to happen a lot of the time. And you'll be hitting them for 125 extra damage. So tail sweep all the way. But Frost Breath is also a decent basic attack. Like, it does a little bit more than a, a low-end Tail Sweep. 361 damage, it's fine. It looks cool, too. Frost Breath is actually, like, one of the coolest-looking abilities in the game. Uh, one of the coolest-looking pet battle abilities. So if you want a, a cool-looking spell, Frost Breath is the way to go. Otherwise, go with Tail Sweep for more damage, but they're both both viable. So there are some variations you can do to your Nexus well plane. Like, instead of taking Tail Sweep, you can take Frost Breath. All the other times, you're going to be taking Arcane Storm and Mana Surge uh, for PvE and PvP. Unless you really, really want him to use Wild Magic, in which case I'd suggest getting a, a Chi Chi, a Core Fire Imp, or a Sengen Fetish. Because they're all way better at putting out Wild Magic. Plus, they can all, like, take advantage of it as well. Core Fire Imp has a dot and immolation. Chi Chi has multi-turn moves. Sengen Fetish has a... A flame breath. Uh, Nexus Wobbly don't have any of that. It's actually kind of a really bad one to put out while magic, but he does have the highest attack power of all of them, so if you really want a hard hitting wild magic, uh, I'd suggest using Kovac and using Black Claw instead. <laughs> uh, because Black Claw is better in the pets, actually. Yeah, just, just use Arcane Star Mana Surge, don't use the other abilities. 